Welcome back to Bass and Baits. Today we're going to revisit our best baits for wintertime bass fishing. And in that video, I said that a swing head jig is one of my favorites. So today I want to go in a little deeper. I'm going to tell you what sizes I use, what equipment I use it with, how I fish it, what all I put on it, you know, what a bite feels like. Basically to start off, I want to describe it to you. I mean, if you don't know what it is, it's just a football shaped weight connected to a free swinging hook on the back. I mean, this, these hooks can go from, you know, one knot to seven knot, depending on what you throw. And that's just it. You can absolutely throw anything behind this. You, the shape to the bait is a football, so that helps it come through rocks well, just like a football jig. It doesn't catch as big a fish as a football jig, but you, I get more bites on it. Now I did, me and my partner fished a tournament last year here, a little local tournament, and we weighed in over 30 pounds and five fish with this, with actually with this creature bait right here. Uh, we had one that went eight three. We had two that was in the seven somethings, um, and then two that went over four pounds. So, and they always come, they all come off a of swing head and this. I mean, we was trying to catch some fish that morning. They was huge size, so I never went to a football jig. So, so it definitely will catch big ones. Now let's get into the sizes. Um, the most common size that I use is, is a half, five eighths, and three quarter. Um, those three sizes just seems like to me I can cover the whole water with them. I, I have fished with, a, with an ounce but most of the time it's not necessary. I do throw a one ounce uh, football jig but I think the bulk of the skirt you know makes it a little harder to keep on the bottle. With this you normally just have a pretty slim line plastic it comes down it sinks pretty fast so and, and as far as what size I use to win, is it just depends on how, I, whatever speed I'm wanting to fish, I want to keep bottom contact. So if I can do it with a half ounce, I'm going to do it with a half. If, if, if I'm fishing at the speed I want to fish, and I feel like the fish are biting at that speed, and I can't keep it on the bottom, I'm just going to go up. I'm going to go up to a 5 8 If I still can't keep bottom contact, I'm going to go up to a 3 quarter. Now let's look at the baits that I throw on it. Um, my number one bait I'm always going to say is a creature bait. It doesn't have a lot of action back here. I don't want something with ridges. Um, I just want good flat, you know, crawdad shaped um, appendages. Something kind of dead, it's good and slow, so is the bait. So, so a creature would be good. You know, any kind of little crawl. This is just a little crawl that I make. It kind of looks like a rage. It has a lot of action when reeled fast. If I'm going to move it slow and drag it along the bottom, this is okay. Um, and, and a lizard. I've caught a ton of fish on a lizard. I know it has more action than I would even think, but I mean, I have caught them on a lizard. Any bait, uh, a tube bait works good. Now something I've started doing, in any lake that has, you know, they're feeding on shad, and I know they are, a paddle tail swim bait works good on it. Now this is something I don't see a lot of people throw and it'll absolutely smash them. So definitely to give that a try, you know, put a Kitek on it. If you hadn't fished with a Kitek, you need to. Um, any type of paddle tail bait though would be fine on a, a swimming caffeine shed. That'd be fine as well. Now on to the equipment. I um, want you to throw seven foot medium heavy action rod it's going to have some some good backbone, but it's still going to have a good a good tip. Um, pair that with some type of high speed reel. You're going to be making super long casts, so you want to be able to pick that slack up in case you get that bite way out there, and you want to be able to move him towards the boat. Now, how I'm going to fish this bait is I want to make a long cast, and I want to let it free fall straight to the bottom. Okay, I want to get it to the bottom. It's a bottom oriented bait, and that's where I want it to be. So I'm not going to do anything till I get it to the bottom. I'm going to slack line it, control slack, watch the line as it goes down. If I see any kind of quick movement or anything, it's most likely a bite. I'm going to reel down and check it. Okay, so once we get it on the bottom, I pretty well just fish it like a crankbait. I mean, I really do. I just throw it out, slow reel it in. Like I do, I fish a football jig the same way. I'm going to just slow methodically reel it in as long as I'm keeping contact with the bottom. I want to feel that thing bumping on the bottom. If I come up to something, it feels, you know, it feels like I'm on a rock, a stump, whatever. I'm going to pause it there. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to try to entice that bite. 
If I don't get it, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to work the bait over whatever I'm fishing and continue with my reel. Another way I fish, it's just like a football jig. I'm going to throw it out, let it hit the bottom, controlled slack line. I'm going to work that bait back to me, just dragging. Reeling down the slack, drag it to me. I want to know what's down there. Now I'm going to throw this bait anywhere I see a 45 degree bank or if I find where I've got a concentration of bait that's setting on drops um, especially if, if I see schools of shad that's why this has come into play with the swing with the uh, paddle tail I've, I've been doing it if if I can catch a concentration of bait fish schooled up on any type of ledge or any type of drop off be it in old creek channel or whatever I'll give you an, an, an example out here at our local lake I mean everything around it's about 20 foot and there's about a an 8 foot wide creek channel that just snakes its way through the whole lake and our shad are setting up right on the edge of that drop right where it goes from 20 down to about 27 they'll sit right there on top of that drop so what I've been doing is I take this I cast it out past the drop and I'm just slow reeling it into that into that creek bed that old creek channel and either on on the high side of it or I'll come down through the channel and when I get up on this side that's when I'm getting my bites. They're just waiting on these shad. I mean it's a die. It, as it gets cold you're gonna have some die off. These shad are just basically floating down to them and they're just sitting there getting fat. So that's a good spot to fish it. Like I said anywhere I'm, I, I really want rock. I want some rocky areas when I'm throwing it you know with any type of creature style because I'm mimicking a crawfish. So I'm looking for some rock, some pea gravel, anything that the crawfish would would live in you know in the winter months if you if your if your local lake doesn't have any type of hard bottom I mean see if you can find some you know stumps some trees anything down there if not I mean just find your deeper banks cast to the bank drag that thing back those fish are there somewhere so you just have to find them now when it comes to detecting a bite on them um, most of the time you're you're gonna feel you know the, the line will just get heavy the bait will just get heavy feeling um, it won't feel right and most of the time they're not real bad to spit these baits out so what I'll do I, I just continue to reel until I feel that that fish will load up on it you'll feel it pull down a lot of times it'll just give you you know any kind of tug once I get that tug I'm gonna set the hook and I'm gonna fight that fish I, I don't wanna I'm not gonna hook him and, and play with him out there because I wanna I wanna keep grinding him in. I want him in the boat. One of the main reasons I got into doing that is, is when I first started fishing with these I kept having the fish they would come up by the boat you know give you a good shake and out comes your deal. I mean it would be all the way down you know they'd have the hook in their mouth and this would be sticking out and this this big weight swinging back and forth will throw this hook so that's something you want to do. I mean, get them in there. You're throwing 20 pound test line. You don't have to baby him. Get him in the boat. If you feel like this video helped you out, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.